Esteban Constrias Mondeza. So he'll talk about forbidden subgrass characterizations for polar co-grass. So please. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, thank you all for being here. I also want to thank the organizers for accepting my talk. Uh, this is part of the work that I've done under the supervision of Dr. Cesar Hernandez Cruz during the first semesters of my doctorate. So let's start. Well, uh, first I want to talk to you about the forbiddance of graphs. So a property P of graphs is said to be a hereditary property. If any time that a graph G has the property P, then all the induced subgraphs has also the property P. So uh, we will say that a graph G is a minimal P obstruction if G doesn't have the property P, but every proper induced subgraph of G does. Uh, it is well known that for any hereditary property P, uh, the graphs with the property P are characterized by uh, the graphs that have no minimal P obstruction as an induced subgraph. Uh, but the problem is that uh, the family of the minimal P obstructions could be finite or infinite. So, uh, if the family is finite, then we have a brute force polynomial algorithm for the recognition problem of the graphs with the property P. But uh, if the family is infinite, then it could uh, occur that, uh, that the problem is easy to solve, the, the recognition problem, or maybe it could be even NP-hard, very difficult problem. So, now let me introduce you to the polar graphs. So, uh, for natural numbers S and K, we will say that a graph G is an SK polar graph if there exists a partition of its vertex set into a red and blue vertices in such a way that red vertices induce a complete multipartite graph with at most S parts, while blue vertices induce the disjoint union of at most K complete graphs, which we call a K cluster. If S and K are infinite, then it means that the number of parts in the complete multipartite graph or the number of connected components in the cluster are not bounded. So in the literature, it is common that infinite infinite polar graphs are simply called polar graphs. So here we have an example. This graph has a partition into red and blue vertices and as we can see the red vertices induces a complete bipartite graph while the blue vertices induce the disjoint union of two complete graphs. So this graph is an SK polar graph for any election of S and K greater than or equal to 2. Uh, some facts about SK polar graphs. First, if S and K are both fixed parameters then to be an SK polar graph is a hereditary property. Uh, uh, then uh, if S and K are natural numbers, if they are not infinite, then there are only a uh, finite number of minimal SK polar obstructions. But uh, such minimal obstruction characterization is not known uh, except for a few pairs of values S and K. On the other hand, the recognition problem of SK polar graphs could be a very difficult problem if one of S and K is infinite. For example, the recognition problem of infinite, infinite and one infinite polar graphs are NP-complete problems. And finally, it is easy to see that a graph G is an SK polar graph if and only if its complement is a KS polar graph. This is because the complement of a complete multipartite graph is the disjoint union of uh, complete graphs. Okay, we will use some of these properties uh, later. Now, uh, let me introduce you to the most beautiful class of graphs that I know. They are the co-graphs, and they were defined in 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 the way that we will do by Corneille Lerches and Stewart Burlingham. So we will define co-graphs as the class of graphs that can be constructed by a finite sequence of the following three rules. First, uh, the single vertex graph uh, K1 is a co-graph. Second, the complement of any co-graph is also a co-graph. And third, the disjoint union on, of any two co-graphs is also a co-graph. Okay? Uh, from this uh, characterization or from this definition is that the co-graphs receive their name of complement reducible graphs or co-graphs in short. So, uh, in fact, co-graphs could be defined in many different ways. Uh, it could be proved that a uh, graph G is a co-graph if and only if it could be generated from single vertex graphs by means of disjoint union operations and joint operations. 
Also, the class of cographs is exactly the class of P4 free graphs, the graphs that has no induced path on four vertices. And finally, uh, graph G is a cograph if and only if for any non-trivial induced subgraph H of G, either H or its complement is disconnected. Uh, from this uh, characterization, we have that any cograph G admits a rooted level labeled tree, sorry, a rooted label tree uh, representation, name it its code tree, uh, in such a way that the vertices of G are leaves of the code tree, and two vertices of G are adjacent if and only if its lowest common ancestor in its code tree is a one, and they are not adjacent if it is a zero. So the importance of the code tree is that many difficult problems of, co of general graphs uh, admit efficiently uh, solutions for the class of cographs uh, using the, uh, precisely the code tree and divide and conquer algorithms. So um, I don't pretend to explain code trees in depth, but I will mention them later at the end of the talk. For now, let me tell you some things about cographs. Well, uh, Peter Damaske proved in 1990 that any hereditary property on cographs has only a finite number or for of forbidden induced uh, of forbidden minimal obstructions. Uh, so, in particular, if s if s and k are fixed parameters, then there is only a finite number of cograph minimal sk polar obstructions. So, it uh, turned out to be very natural to ask about the exact list of such obstructions. Uh, well, from here on, I won't be saying cograph minimal SK polar obstructions because it is too large and it is a tongue twister for me. So I will abbreviate it as minimal SK obstructions, but you won't get confused because I will be talking only about cographs for the rest of the talk. So we are interested in uh, in SK polar cographs, and more precisely, we are interested in the minimal SK obstructions. So what uh, did we know before we start uh, on this work? So the zero K polar graphs are precisely the K clusters, the disjoint union of at most K complete graphs. And it is easy to see that all of them are cographs. And also uh, they are characterized by these forbidden induced subgraphs. So the problem uh, of zero K polar characterization is completely solved for cographs. Then the one one polar graphs are uh, the graphs that admits a uh, partition into a clique and an independent set, and they are well known as the split graphs. They were characterized many years ago as the 2K2, C4, C5 free graphs. And since the cographs are precisely the P4 free graphs, then a cograph is a 1 1 polar uh, graph if and only if, if it is 2K2, C4 free graph. The cograph split graph. Uh, are precisely the threshold graphs that uh, Professor Barus mentioned in the previous talk. Uh, well, then Ekim Mahadeva and Devera were the pioneers in the study of polar cographs, uh, and they characterized the class of polar cographs by means of eight forbidden induced subgraphs. Uh, Bravo, Nogueira, Protean, Viana gave the exhaustive list of minimal 2 1 obstructions. And three years ago, uh, Cesar and I gave the minimal infinite one obstructions, as well as a complete recursive construction for uh, obtaining all the minimal S1 obstructions for any value of S. Uh, finally, uh, two years ago, Pavel Hell, Cesar Hernandez Cruz, and Claudia Linares Sales gave the complete family of minimal 2 2 obstructions. So, uh, if you remember, I told you that a graph G is an SK polar graph if and only if its complement is a KS polar graph. So, by considering these uh, graph complements, uh, some analogous result can be given, but uh, uh, these are uh, the, the known results. Okay? Uh, so, our goal in this work was to find complete families of minimal infinite K uh, obstructions for integers K greater than 1. So notice that uh, minimal infinite k obstructions previously were previously known only for k equals 0, k equals 1, and k equals infinite. Also notice that 
we previously knew all the minimal S1 abstractions and the minimal infinite one abstractions and it will be important because um, most of our results are recursive constructions of minimal infinite K abstractions from uh, these abstractions that we previously knew. So what did we do? Uh, we started uh, giving some general properties of minimal infinite K abstractions. For example, we proved that an abstraction has at most k plus 2 components that not all of their components could be isolated vertices and um, okay and we proved that if if an abstraction has at least one isolated vertex then it has at most one component that is not a complete graph so most of the of their components will be complete graphs and we also prove that every uh, component that is a complete graph has at most two vertices so it is isomorphic to k1 or to k2 uh, so from the first three uh, points here we could classify all the minimal infinite k abstractions by their number of connected components and isolated vertices so uh, we classify them into these uh, kind of stair, this triangle, and then we started uh, studying the connected minimal infinite k abstractions, okay, the, this one depicted in green. So for minima, for k equals 0 and 1, the minimal infinite k obstructions, we knew that there were no connected ones. So it was surprising to find that for k greater than 1, there are uh, so for k greater than than 1, there are precisely four connected minimal infinite k obstructions and they don't depend on the value of k. Uh, they could be constructed as the complement of the disjoint union of some of these four graphs with a component isomorphic to p3. So, um, okay, and it is important to say that uh, these connected obstructions are, all of them are infinite infinite uh, obstructions. So, okay, with this, with this result, we completely characterize all the connected minimal infinite k obstructions for any k. Uh, and then we asked for which are the disconnected ones. So, for solving this question, we use the classification that, we, that I mentioned before uh, into the types ci, where c is the number of connected components and i is the number of isolated vertices. So, uh, we have three uh, main types. The, the first is the type C0, that are minimal obstructions that has no isolated vertices. They are depicted in purple here. Then we have the type C, C-1, and they are obstructions th such that all their components are isolated vertices, about one. They have only one component that is not an isolated vertex. And then we have all the remaining types that are depicted in white. And I will refer to these types as the general case. But uh, I want to explain to you these these different cases from the easier to the more difficult. So I will start with the remaining types, then I will explain you the type C0, I, I will finish with the type C-1. So what happened with the general case, the, the, the other types, the remaining? Well, uh, we, we obtained this result that is a complete characterization for the uh, obstructions of, of these types and but let Recording me in progress. explain to you in uh, with this picture so if we want to obtain the minimal infinite k obstructions uh, of these types that are the, the squares uh, in color here we map this triangle into this triangle of the minimal infinite k minus one obstructions okay so if i want an obstruction of the type on the green square I look the, for the obstructions on the, this green square and if one obstruction here is a 1k polar graph then I just uh, add a component isomorphic to k2 and the graph obtained will be an obstruction of here and all the obstructions here could be constructed in the same way so basically we are uh, making a recursive construction of the minimal infinite k obstructions uh, based on the minimal infinite k minus 1 obstructions so it was a very pleasant uh, it was very pleasant to obtain this result so we continue with the with the other types so now let me tell you what happened with the uh, minimal infinite k obstructions that has no isolated vertices 
So in this case, it turned out to be convenient to divide them into two cases, depending on whether they have or not a component isomorphic to P3. So uh, don't be afraid. In the next slide, uh, slides we will see a lot of words, but let's focus on the structure of the theorems rather than the details. Okay. Uh, well, first we have here a theorem. Uh, that completely characterize the obstructions with an isolated vertices and such that they don't have components isomorphic to P3. So for this case, we could prove that, um, that any obstruction has the form of the disjoint union of two uh, graphs, H1 and H2, in such a way that each HI is either a minimal one-something obstruction with some extra properties or HI is a graph with a closed formula, okay? Uh, and then no, points 3 and 4 say that HI must uh, satisfy some extra property. S but uh, the structure of the theorem is that G could be constructed as the disjoint union of minimal obstructions that we previously knew, or uh, graphs with a closed formula. So uh, it is, again, a recursive construction from all these... Uh, minimal obstructions of these types without components isomorphic to P3. In the case in which we have uh, components isomorphic to P3, we have a very similar result. In this case, we characterize these obstructions as the disjoint unions of uh, component P3, of course, with a graph H such that satisfies one of these uh, statements. So statements 1 and 2 say that, again, H is a graph with a closed formula while uh, statements 4 and 3, the 4 for example, say that H is a minimal obstruction of a uh, that we previously know, uh, while the point 3 say that H is a graph that can be constructed from minimal obstructions that we also previously knew. So again, this is a, a recursive construction from this uh, type of obstructions. So for now, it just remain to characterize the obs the minimal infinite k obstructions with type cc minus one. These that are depicted in blue. So uh, as I told you before, these are the more difficult obstructions uh, in this work. Uh, we have this theorem that is a technical characterizations uh, characterization for these obstructions. So it say that. A graph G is an obstruction of this type if it is the disjoint union of an independent set with a connected and non-complete graph H in such a way that H satisfies uh, one of these assertions. No, all of these assertions, sorry. But the problem here is that in this characterization, we don't have a property of the kind that that indicates that H is a minimal something-something uh, obstruction, okay? We have properties related to polarity, of course, uh, but none of them implies directly that H is a minimal obstruction uh, that we previously know of in any kind. But, okay, not everything was lost. With help of this theorem, we could obtain some simple characterization for specific values of C, uh, namely C equals 2 and C equals K plus 2. And again, these characterizations has the same, uh, the same structure. In the case of the obstructions of type 2, 1, we, uh, we obtain the result that they could be constructed from disconnected minimal infinite K minus 1 obstructions. Uh, and for the case of type K plus 2, K plus 1, we we could uh, gape a complete list of obstructions. Uh, but as I told you before, the, it seems to be very difficult to give the complete uh, list of minimal infinite K obstructions of, uh, of type CC-1 for another values of C. Uh, but, well, uh, with an extra effort, we use the code tree representation of the co graphs and some properties of them and their structure. And and using some very complicated lemmas, we could obtain a characterization, complete characterization for minimal infinite k obstructions of the types k plus 1k and kk minus 1, that are these and these, uh, but no more. Okay? So in this picture, I, I show you uh, in white squares all the types of minimal infinite k obstructions for which 
uh, we have a complete characterization, a complete recursive characterization, but uh, the red vertices are types of obstructions that we, for which we don't have a complete uh, recursive characterization. Okay, so the problem is is open, is still open, but well, with our results we obtain this uh, uh, that for k uh, equals two or k equals three we obtain complete list complete list of minimal obstructions and I didn't draw them because they are uh, a lot uh, but the numbers here in these squares are for the number of obstructions of each type so notice that uh, for k uh, lower than or equal to 3 all the numbers in the green in the green squares that are the the general types are 1 so it means that there is only one minimal obstruction of each of these types. In fact, we could prove that for these three columns in the general case, these three columns has, uh, have only one in each of these uh, squares. And we conjecture that the same is true for these uh, blue squares, but uh, we haven't been able to prove this uh, yet. So we, uh, we have some open questions here. Uh, but this is what what we what we done. So thanks for your attention. Here we have two QR codes. Uh, the one on the left is uh, for downloading the paper where these results appears. It is uh, free before May 30th. And the QR code on the right is uh, because if you want these slides. So thanks for your attention. If you have any question, I am here. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions? I have a quick question. And yes. I believe, well, I hope it's a good question. So, and, and also thank you for the wonderful talk. That was, that was really good. But I'm, I'm wondering, so the, do you mind going back? This is a fair ways to this, the slide that showed like the the results of what was known in terms of yes. these SK polar um, obstructions. Sorry, which one? It's, oh, so it's it's back a bit more. It, it's sh it's basically showing like where you're filling in the niche of of that uh, far left far right column, I guess. Okay, this um, one. Oh no, sorry. Sorry, I didn't understand you again. Listen. Oh, it's okay. Well, I guess I'm wondering. Closer to the beginning of the talk, you talked about how uh, the results you gave are uh, work for, well, sorry, this will be easier if I go. So do you mind going back some more slides, please? Sorry. If someone has a more coherent question, feel free to step in. Okay. Uh, yeah, perfect. So a couple, a couple more head, um, and then one, one more head. I guess the the last slide in this sequence would be helpful. Is that? Oh yeah, sorry. So <laughs> if you, you proceed, so yeah, forward to the, yeah. To the last slide in the sequence. Um, yeah, because you you ended up like this was the, you know the goal in terms of your work, and I'm wondering if like due to any sort of like I'm wondering, are the methods that you've used would they be able to work like in the inverse side? So I guess the uppermost row um, in the obstructions. Does that make sense? Uh, okay. Are you asking me about this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Our our results uh, give us uh, directory results for these obstructions uh, because of the complements. If I, if you remember, I told you that a graph G is an SK polar graph if and only if its complement is K is polar. So our results uh, directly give us uh, uh, complementary results for this part. Perfect. Okay. I'm, gl I'm glad I asked because I, I was hoping there would be that symmetry. So thank you. Okay. Don't worry. Thanks. Are there any other questions? Okay, so if not, then thanks the speaker again. Thank you.